As defeats go, this isn't all that mood damaging for Manchester United. No, I think Manchester United could take a lot of positives. Um, the first thing, the goal they conceded with Virgil van Dijk, mm. if you... If you're fortunate enough to watch it back on telly, you'll notice that they do zonal marking. So it's obviously something Liverpool have worked on. Jurgen Klopp has always been, been a big fan of outswinging corners. But they set up a one in the front space and five across the six-yard line. And then they have blockers. Now, it ended up being Brandon Williams who's on Virgil van Dijk. Now, the role of a blocker is just to stop him getting a clear run. But when you have someone who's six foot five, who's probably 14 stone of pure muscle, he gets a run on Brandon Williams and then it's all like Harry Maguire is trying to get across and he's scrambling but Van Dyke has the run and the delivery is exceptional and it's a great header but besides that and then you, you could talk about the opening five minutes of the second half where Man United were all over the place they were just constantly trying to play out from the back and they were getting everything wrong they were just inviting Liverpool onto them they were turning over possession in bad areas they were just giving chance after chance you, were, you would have expected Liverpool to score but like they just suddenly grew into the game and you yeah. know Martial had a fantastic chance that you'd expect him to score it was a lovely little one-two he was about seven yards out and he just you know he's usually so calm in those moments you know he's, he's yeah. cold he's clinical and he went for he went for the laces instead of trying to place it yeah I know and you know he, he ballooned it over the bar and it, at that moment the game was probably on a coin it was you know if United had scored there like Liverpool would have been frustrated, you'd probably still expect them to come back and you know mm. go through the motions and get get back into it. And but United were on top at that time, and you know they were playing some good stuff. It's 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 what's so special about games like this is when it's Manchester United v Liverpool, like form kind of goes out the window. It's a big rivalry. You could tell even you know the the, the last ten minutes when United were throwing everything at it, the fans were the Liverpool fans were on the edge of their seats. They were moaning and groaning at every clearance, everything, and they, they just all, it, it almost felt as if they expected Manchester United to score. Yeah, Liverpool only really, by their standards, played in two bursts after the first goal, which was you know such a momentum changer because United had started quite well. And then you even said on commentary, "This has settled Liverpool right down. They're suddenly fluid. They're moving. They're comfortable. You know, everything's in front of them. It's lovely." And then after the second half, they were electric in those few minutes after the second half. Besides those two. 10 15 minute spells by their standards they weren't electric today no they weren't um but the point is they're just this team is just finding ways all the time to win games mm. that is that is the beauty of it they just they weren't fantastic today you'd probably rate them like a solid six out of ten Do you know um i said to nathan a while ago like they brought on adam milan at 65 minutes it probably was the wrong substitution at the time um it kind of killed the momentum. I, I said in commentary that I felt he would come on and add control. The game had become so open. Oxen Chamberlain was bursting forward, so there was you know spaces being created in midfield. Mm. But Adam Lallana couldn't get to you know the pitch of it. Couldn't get to grips with the the intensity of it straight away, which is you know the hard thing when you when you are a substitute and you do come on, you have to get into the game as quickly as possible. And it took him probably ten or fifteen minutes to get into it, which was Man United's main time of you know threatening Liverpool mm. for an equaliser yeah I, I mean it's funny you made the point that they're just finding ways to win and when you watch them you have that sense even when United are on top you just have some kind of sense that Liverpool will find a way I, like the, it's a funny thing that if 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 this run was only starting now and say we had the Spurs game and the United game today you would almost say to yourself geez well they won't keep getting away with it but the fact is they've been getting away with it for such a long time now that for whatever reason they are getting away with it yeah, no, it's like everybody will just say Liverpool have won the league title. You know, Nathan has said, like Nathan said to me, surely they've won the league title. I'm kind of going, in the back of my mind, you're still thinking they can't continue to go on like this. Um, I said ages ago when they were on such a successful run, I felt um, February would be the time they would you know, drop points. I, I don't know why I have that in my head. Everyone was talking about the Christmas fixture list. I just felt that February would be the time where they'll they'll draw games but look do you still think that lead, I still do for some reason I don't think they'll go unbeaten I don't know why um, I think they'll just have a game where they'll there'll be a couple of mistakes or something that will just be just the way it will go yeah. and I think they'll end up losing a game but that then will refocus the team again 
but I don't think they're like they're looking at the invincible record. I think they're just so solely focused on winning that first Premier would, League title. Would, if you were in that dressing room, would you be mentioning the invincible thing? We got to keep like in a sense, everybody knows the league is probably done. They probably know it deep down, and they're enjoying that. Would you be in that dressing room thinking, does it? It's worth as a, even as motivation, even as a keep everybody on their toes and focused. We should be going for forty nine. We should be going for forty nine. Getting that into everyone's head. Would you use that? No, no I wouldn't. Like, it, look, we're, we're, you're going to see a whole host of social media interviews, interviews with Sky, what have you, match of the day. And I guarantee you, every player will say, we're just focused on the next game. I think that really is their mentality. That's what Jurgen Klopp has instilled in them. They're just looking at their next fixture next week. And then they will just say, we're going to win this game. We're going to win this game. They don't think of the invincible record. I think it will only become something once the league title is actually mathematically won. I don't think they'll actually focus on it. And of course, they also need to win it, but also be unbeaten at that time once they've won it. I thought Fred and Maddich had very good games for United. Yeah, no, I thought... um, I would say Fred had a very good game. I was impressed with him. Um, Matic at times was sloppy. Um, I I would love to sit down with him and see what's kind of going on with him. Yeah. Um, because the, the, the Matic that was at Chelsea when he signed, I like I remember telling my friends who are Manchester United fans, I said, that's an incredible sign. I'm a big fan of Nemanja Matic. I think he's a superb holding midfielder. At times today, he was a bit loose. Right. But like... He hasn't played a lot on the Solskjaer. He seems to be coming back in and around the team. But, you know, maybe if they could get him firing again alongside Fred, and maybe they could play Pogba, you know, Pogba could play just in front of them where then Paul Pogba has the license to kind of go forward and do everything because, look, Pogba has every attribute you'd want in a footballer. Mm. You know, if they can get him firing, and then obviously he has the cover, knowing that Matic is behind him and won't move and will look after that defensive you know, responsibility yeah. that Paul Pogba won't have to do, I think you could probably get the best out of Paul Pogba. That's the Paul Pogba that was a Juventus. Yeah. You know, he was always fortunate that he had Vidal and Pirlo, Marquisio and Matuidi, who did the defensive work for him, and he was just left to go forward and left to go create. Maybe Maric caught the eye more because we haven't seen him in so long. I just assumed he must have gone off a cliff completely. I just assumed his leg yeah, must I- have gone. And so the fact that he looked vaguely quite like Matic and kind of okay maybe added to the sense of oh geez he's, he's not finished yet completely because he's just disappeared yeah, yeah no I, I agree with you like from the Matic I'm thinking of the one I played against that wasn't one of those performances sure I think yes he was good but like like if you really think about it he's been in like he's been in and out obviously he's come into the team recently he's not been playing regularly like say an entire season but I think if that Matic continues to play week in, week out, like he did today, he'll only get better and better, and that will be huge for Manchester United. Mm. Uh, just a final few thoughts from you. you. You you spelled it out very clearly at one stage in the first half about the pros and cons of what Solskjaer tried to do today. And it's interesting as we try and judge what kind of manager Solskjaer is. So you, you picked out Williams and Bissaka. And so this, they're part of a back five, essentially, but really they were really pushing up on Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold. And you were making the point that there's a real pro to that for sure. The downside is if, for instance, Salah comes short, then Shaw sort of has to go with them and suddenly there's a lot of space for midfielders to run in to in that left-hand channel, United's left-hand channel, Liverpool's right side. And, and that was the, the really interesting game of chess that Solskjaer and Klopp were playing today. Do you think that was an impressive thing of Solskjaer to try? Did you think it worked? Uh, does it show a certain kind of sophistication? You mentioned you like Mike Phelan. How did, how did you think all that worked? Well, it, you, you would have to say it did work. The goals I conceded were a set piece and obviously like a counter-attack when they're throwing the kitchen at it that like Alisson grabs the ball and keeps on the pitch. They limited Trent Alexander-Arnold Robertson. Do you know what? The lads had good, you know, had good afternoons, wan and Luke Shaw and Brandon Williams. You know, the, the interesting thing is, like, it took Liverpool too long to realise that it is very difficult when you're in, you know, you, when you're playing and you're on the pitch. It's only the special players can identify something so soon. But that was the one was Shaw was better at going with Salah then like Lindelof didn't want to step out of that area because mm. he's obviously comfortable and he's used to playing as a two sitting 
like that like he didn't want to step out into no man's land so then it left you know Manny and Firmino took turns going over there to try and get on the ball and get half turned that's why Juan Bissaka was a bit caught at times he was up against Robertson but then the problem was the gap between him and Lindelof was too big that your man or your Firmino could get turned and you know try and create yeah. something but so Lin, in in your world Lindelof should have done what Shaw was doing if you know you could push him to go out a little bit try yeah but then when Shaw did that there was times when he went up against them there was times then Axel, Alex Oxlade and Chamberlain ran him behind yeah. because he's leaving acres of space so it is looks like Russian roulette at times you know if you like Lindelof would say well his his argument would be well the players in front of me I can see the ball mm. I'm not running back towards my own goal I'm defending it properly so you know there is a catch for both of them but I felt you know they did they did well mm. you can't you can't say like of course it was one slip and Salah should score he's you know, he, what is he six yards out and he, he kicks the ball from his left foot onto his right foot and it dribbles past the post but you know inevitably United did well you know they were solid obviously there was that five minutes after after half time we spoke about which was all over the place they couldn't string three four passes together and they was, were was just that just more about Liverpool being on fire you know so, sometimes they can just get in a flow and it's very difficult to interrupt it yeah yeah they suffocated them mm. they just set little traps it was like you'd arc your players so Mane would start higher on top of the right back or the right side of centre half and you'd have Firmino over a little bit so they'd encourage them to play the ball left but it's just the way they press together in numbers mm. but they were just Manchester United didn't realise Liverpool tried to play out at one stage and Alisson kicked the ball out for a throw in and there was big moans and groans but the next time it came to him he put the ball down and he waved everyone away he said get up the pitch yeah. it took Manchester United 7-8 goal kicks to do that whereas you have to identify that that was just after you know, the start of half time like Henderson had made De Gea pull off a wonderful save like I said Salah had a great chance that's where you just need to put the ball down and say get up the pitch yeah. get away from here yeah, no, we I need do. to settle into it and get on the ball. Yeah, you said that as well. Just get up the pitch, win it free. I totally agree with that. Like too often we are seeing teams. If Liverpool set a trap for you, I mean, don't be silly. I mean, if if they line up in that arc that you you kind of painted there, and say Luke Shaw or Williams is your obvious out ball as a goalkeeper, and it looks a little bit too obvious and a little bit too easy, there's probably a good reason it does. Yeah, but there was there was another prime example. A cross came in, the gate came and caught it. And Fred was probably 10 yards um, outside the box. And he had his back. He had his back to play. He took it on the back foot. But there was four Liverpool players swarmed him. Mm. It was almost like you, like we're encouraged all the time to get on the ball, get it, you know, receive it and play forward. But at times, you just gotta, you've got to sense the game. This yeah. was a proper derby today. There was tackles. It was intense. Like Both teams fighting for their clubs to try and win the game. And it was just that period Manchester United were just making poor decisions and Liverpool will be kicking themselves I imagine they'll probably watch it back tomorrow after training and you know Jurgen Klopp will identify things but you can't you can't invite a team like Liverpool onto you that the way they press and they go after teams they just suffocated them yeah teams will have to get sharper and read these kind of things themselves increasingly and, and that's the sophistication and brilliance of Liverpool so uh, final thoughts it's not a humiliation for United by any means there's lots they can take from the game I mean in the wider sense they're still in this inconsistent run of two steps forward and three steps back and then four steps forward and it's hard to know quite where they are but today not, not one of the really bad days for Liverpool they get it done again they find a way again they should win the Champions League as well shouldn't they? Oh look I don't know but they should win the Champions League but it's crazy to think that they're not even, you know, they're not regarded as favourites to win the Champions League. Who are favourites? Um, I believe Real Madrid are. Um, you might want to check that. I'll check. You talk, I'll check. Yeah, but the thing, it's, it's just interesting that, you know, they're so far ahead in the Premier League. They're playing exceptional football. Um, they are the Champions League holders that, you know, you would think, but if they were to pick up two or three injuries and, oh, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> They just need to focus, like, I'm going to give you the answer that they're all going to give us. We've been saying all year about injuries. I've got the odds here. Go on. Favourites are Manchester City. Okay. Followed by Liverpool. Followed by okay. Barcelona. Followed by Munich. I don't see Madrid here at all, actually. Madrid are, right. s- Madrid are 16 to 1. They're well down. So it's City or Liverpool. Is how the bo- <laughs> City or Liverpool is how the bookies see it. Which is kind of how I'd see it, too. Is English football not ahead of Barca and Bayern no, I and agree. PSG? I agree. Yeah, well, if you look at it, like, Man City last year, 
obviously coming so close. Uh, Tottenham obviously playing in the final against Liverpool, so you have three of the four, you know. Mm. Um, so that just shows. I don't know where I heard Real Madrid. <laughs> um, I, I apologise for that stuff. No, that's facts. It's, it's fine. Um, but but, but it just so, shows. Yeah, go on. It shows that like Liverpool and Man City are dominating, but I just want Liverpool to focus on the Premier League. Um, just get that first Premier League title out of the way. Like they have 18 championships, or they've won, but they've mm. no Premier League. Mm. That's the, that's the hard thing. And if they get that one. You know, it could be one of those where he just like slightly rotates the team and look the momentum of their winning streak and how they're playing and yeah. the way things are going. They could just end up rolling on, and next minute you know you're in a, a semi-final. They probably, you know, they might have won the league at the end of March, and then all of a sudden you can kind of concentrate on the Champions League. Mm. And maybe that's the tricky thing actually, because when teams win the league little wobbles come in and maybe you lose a bit of momentum I suppose the real benefit is he can still in the vast majority of matches play his best team and next game and next game but maybe if needs be on the Saturday before a big Champions League knockout game then he can rest certain players that's the real luxury they have now yeah but even even when he rests players the players that come in end up performing and mm. producing the goods and mm. it's just it's just it's it's amazing. And the Van Dykes don't like Van Dyke doesn't seem to be a fellow who needs a rest. You don't look at him and say he's crying out for it. No, but the problem Virgil Van Dyke has he plays in second gear. Mm. Like we've ne- like have we really seen him like have to go to the heights like in performances in games. He doesn't he doesn't have to hit that. He just reads the game so well. He's so strong, he's so quick. Even today when Man United were peppering the box every ball like Nathan said in commentary, he's like a magnet to his head. Mm. The ball just kept falling to him. It's just, that's not that's not luck, you know. Mm. He's in the right position because he's such a good defender. Mm. And he just clears everything. 